right, so this is the uh, sixth Beard Tribology webinar. And uh, in a few moments, uh, uh, Professor Andreas Rosenkraus uh, from the University of Chile will give us a presentation on 2D materials and tribology. Um, first, I just have a few slides I'll get through quickly. So it's this is named the Beard Tribology um, webinar after Ra the late Ralph Beard, who also helped start the tribology minor at Auburn University. And uh, there's a, a fund at Auburn that was established shortly after he passed. Um, and we plan to keep this, uh, but we're going to pause. We'll keep the webinar going. But we are going to pause in the summer um, in, uh, in July and August, and we'll start again in September. Yeah, so here's that. So September 7th, we'll resume. Uh, we have a nice lineup for the fall. Um, so I encourage you to, to keep in touch and we'll um, let you know, I'll send emails out and put post announcements about um, the talks once we have everything scheduled for the fall. Um, I'm still making sure the schedule is good with everybody, but these are the speakers. So uh, Evan Zabowski, um, a lot of people in STLE know who that is and he's very knowledgeable in a lot of areas of tribology. Ahmed Ghania uh, is more in bio um, tribology now, but he's also done stuff in contact mechanics and he'll give a talk. Isabella uh, Zufarska, um, she's like chemistry and materials tribology. So she's probably gonna talk something in that area. And Jim Woodhouse is actually in um, musical instrument physics, and, and he's, going to, he's going to talk about tribological aspects of that. So that should be an interesting talk. Uh, a little bit about the minor and the graduate certificate. We have a minor for undergrad students, which is kind of unique. If you want more in information about that, you can uh, look it up on Google. We also have a graduate certificate uh, for folks in industry, uh, if you're looking for more education in tribology. Um, we have a uh, industrial advisory board and they're the ones who proposed having this um this webinar it was really a uh, rosh shah marine hunter who, who got behind it and uh, they've helped line up the speakers as well and i appreciate their help but i appreciate everybody on the board's help and uh, helping to guide the the minor um yeah something else i didn't put in the slides but in the fall uh i don't have a date yet but we'll probably have the uh symposium that we've had in the past uh so i'll let you know about that um, and there's also a career fair that is tied to that. So I'll post more information about that later. Uh, and thanks to the supporters of the program and also the new organizations, STLE and LGI, ELMA, for their support over the years. Um, so usually how we'd like to do this is, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll look at the comments in the chat and then we'll go through them at the end after, after the talk. So if you have questions during the talk, just type them into the chat and we'll get to them um, after the, uh, the webinar is done. Uh, so today, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Andreas Rosenkrantz and uh, he's currently a professor for uh, material oriented tribology at the University of Chile. He obtained his diploma in 2010 and PhD in 2015 in uh, material science and engineering from Saarland University in Germany. His main research focus lays on the possibility to reduce friction and wear by either surface functionalization or the use of nanoparticles. He has authored more than 60 peer-reviewed journal publication. Uh, he is an Alexander von Humboldt research fellow and ed editor for the peer-reviewed journal Industrial Lubrication Tribology. Um, I think Andres is a rising star in tribology, so it, you know it's good. A lot of the speakers we had so far have been. Uh, more established or people have been in tribology for many decades and I think it's good. Um, we're going to get some uh, more rising um, researchers in the field involved in the, the webinar. So uh, thank you Andreas. First of all I would like to thank um, Rob for the kind invitation. Um, I'm very, very honored to give this presentation today um, especially after having seen all the nice presentations by uh, very much senior tribologists. Um, so today I would like to talk a little bit about uh, 2D maxines, which is an uh, emerging uh, 2D material and uh, about the tunable and mechanical uh, and tribological properties. Um, so 
So first, a few words about my background. Uh, Rob has already mentioned most of the things. So I studied material science and engineering. Um, I did a PhD related to um, surface engineering, surface uh, texturing and turbology. Finished that in 2015. Um, and then I moved first um, to South America, to Santiago de Chile, to work a little bit on the turbology of uh, hard coatings before I went to the University of California to work uh, a little bit uh, like a year on the, the tribological performance of magnetic disks, uh, especially on thin, uh, very thin carbon uh, coatings um, and um, their materials characterization. And then from 2018, I have been joining uh, the University of Chile here again uh, to establish a little bit the field of uh, tribology material uh, oriented tribology. Uh, I believe I don't need to give you any uh, motivation why it is so important to work on tribology. Uh, I, would, uh, I just would like to connect it uh, with, uh, with Chile itself. In this sense, you need to know that Chile uh, or the economy of Chile relies basically on mining, especially on copper mining. And um, there's a, a very nice uh, energy uh, chart uh, from Kenneth Holmberg, uh, a very good colleague uh, uh, of us. Uh, who shows basically the impact of uh, friction and wear related to uh, the mining industries. And in, in the end, it's very similar to, to passenger cars or to the paper industry. So if you start with 100% electrical energy and then you break it down and you check, uh, okay, uh, how much uh, are the frictional losses in the system, you can observe again and this uh, very similar number compared to passenger cars. And we see that about 32%, we, we really lose uh, with friction and wear. And in the end, uh, if you uh, see it uh, on, the, on the final rock crushing, you can see that you're going to lose about uh, 95% uh, of the total energy. So, and then in, uh, for a country that really relies and the economy relies on mining, you can imagine that this is really a, a hot topic and an important topic uh, to address because, of course, you can improve efficiency and you can lower operational costs. So um, the first question that we can ask ourselves is uh, basically how can we uh, tailor friction and wear? So uh, you know that there are basically three or four main approaches. Uh, in this sense, yeah, you can use oils uh, or liquid lubricants, oil and greases, or you go to solid lubrication, for example. Uh, you have the possibility to work on surface engineering, uh, design or material selection. Or for example, you can also uh, apply uh, wear resistant coatings. And today we too, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the topic uh, solid lubricants and uh, why it is so important to replace the, the liquid lubricants oil increases uh, in the near future. We are all aware that uh, liquid lubricants, they are very well known uh, since ancient times. They have been used to really reduce uh, friction and wear, but there is a huge but. Uh, there are certain limitations related to the use of lub liquid lubricants. Uh, we have uh, environmental issues uh, related to the recycling or also related to the use of uh, certain toxic uh, additives. Uh, uh, for example, zinc, uh, phosphorus, sulfur, just to name a few of them. Um, you are pretty aware that the uh, oils and creases, they just uh, work for limited temperature range, pressure range. They may experience degradation uh, over time, uh, which may change the, the properties. Um, so in this, uh, in this sense, um, the scientific community, the tribological community has moved to solid lubrication. In this sense, uh, the first uh, attempts have been done related to carbon-based materials. Uh, also, the entire topic uh, has been boosted uh, quite a lot by the outstanding friction wear performance of graphene, for example, or graphene oxide family juice graphene oxides. People have been uh, use, uh, working uh, since a long time, for example, on uh, MOS2, uh, on tungsten disulfide. Uh, and uh, nowadays there's a new class of uh, 2D materials coming up, uh, which is basically the, the Maxines. And you can see this beautiful uh, 2D structure right now uh, in, in this figure here. Uh, they can be fabricated uh, on a micron scale and they have very interesting uh, mechanical properties uh, which lay right between uh, graphene and graphene oxide. So the, the first thing that you need to ask yourself uh, if you uh, would like to, to use 2D materials that are either like particles or nano sheets or nano flakes um, is uh, how can we really deposit uh, these two uh, D nano materials on, on surfaces, on the surface of interest. 
So if you use query literature, for example, for, for, the, uh, for the methods, you, you're going to come up with a huge number of different techniques. Uh, you can start with mechanical exfoliation, with physical and chemical vapor deposition. Uh, there are coating techniques like spin coating, spray coating, um, also more sophisticated uh, methods like atomic layer deposition, for example, are possible. And then here, uh, uh, you can see in the Maxine, uh, the Queen uh, arrow. Uh, right now, we are very much focused uh, on, on the coating, uh, coatings techniques, spin coating, spray coating, uh, liquid phase uh, exfoliation. There are some efforts related to physical vapor deposition uh, as well. And um, before, I would like to show you something about the mechanical and tribological properties of Maxine's. Uh, first, I would like to introduce Maxine's. So what is really the origin of Maxine's and how can we synthesize them? So uh, Maxine's, they have their origin uh, from something that is called Max phase. Uh, and Max phase, uh, here we have one example, uh, the titanium three aluminum uh, carbon two is one Max phase. So the interesting thing is they, uh, M represents a basically early transition metal, A is for example, aluminum, X is carbon uh, or nitrogen or a ratio between carbon and nitrogen. And they have a very uh, defined uh, and precise stoichiometry. So uh, in order to obtain this max phase, what you have to do is, uh, for example, you can uh, use aluminum powder, carbon powder, and titanium powder. You put them in the oven in the right conditions, uh, in the right uh, stoichiometry. Uh, under argon atmosphere, you heat them up uh, to pretty high temperatures. Uh, one example, for example, is 1,600 uh, centigrees for two hours. And if you do everything uh, in the right way, you may up in, in this beautiful layered like structure. So the blue atoms, they represent the titanium uh, atoms, the black ones, the carbons, and uh, the red ones, we have the, the aluminum layer. So we have a titanium layer followed by a carbon layer followed by titanium, and then we have aluminum. The interesting thing is, uh, if you think now about the bonding uh, characteristics. So what we can find in this titanium three aluminum carbon two is uh, we can find bonding between uh, titanium and carbon. And we can find bonding between titanium and aluminum. So in this sense, if you think about the bonding strength and about the bonding characteristic, you may um, know or realize uh, that uh, between titanium and carbon, we have a, a, a mixed uh, bonding. So mixed bonding means there are contributions of metallic, ionic, and um, uh, covalent, while the titanium aluminum bond is, uh, is mainly metallic. And this gives us some uh, minor differences in the respective bonding strength. So the titanium carbon uh, is a little stronger, the bonding, than the titanium aluminum. And then people in the States, uh, the group around Yuri Kugotsi came to this uh, idea. Why we do not uh, selectively remove just the aluminum layers and we stick with uh, just the titanium carbon uh, in the system? And that's actually what you do uh, for the Maxine synthesis. You try to remove only the aluminum layers and you stay with titanium carbon. Just, and this is just based on the difference uh, in the respective bonding strength. So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna do the selective etching? Um, here you have one example. Um, the first recipes uh, starting with the max phase it was to put the max powder uh, in, a, in a highly concentrated HF. Uh, so hydroxidic fluid, uh, fluid uh, acid um, and um, wait for like 24 hours uh, one, a day. And the interesting thing is because of the differences in bonding strength, you are really able to uh, remove, selectively remove just the aluminum, uh, but you're not uh, attacking the titanium needed the carbon. Nowadays, they're using a little bit, uh, a little um, milder synthesis route. So they're using a, a lithium fluoride uh, mixed with HCl, uh, a little longer the, the time, uh, like 40 hours. Uh, and then the idea is you really remove just the red atoms, just the aluminum, and you're replacing um, the dangling bonds that you're forming by different surface terminations, uh, because you are doing that in a wet etching process, uh, which is always uh, also in water. And you also have to wash it afterwards with water. So you, will, you are typically replacing aluminum by OH, uh, O, fluorine. Um, new recipes are also using uh, chlorine, for example, uh, and, and, and other uh, chemicals. Um, so, but this is a little bit the idea. So you start with the original max phase, 
you do a selective etching and then you end up really in um, the titanium three carbon two, which is the, the most uh, studied member so far of the Maxine uh, uh, class. Here I have a little video just to, to get an idea. So uh, here we start with the, the max phase. So we put the, the, the etching solution. So here we have this beautiful structure, titanium carbon, titanium carbon, and here we still have the aluminum bonds. Now we have the, the attack of the aggressive HF. The HF helps to break the bonds between titanium and aluminum. It's going to take the aluminum away. And then the dangling bonds are saturated by O, OH and fluorine groups. And also in the middle, uh, we, we may have some intercalated water, which still comes from the, the synthesis. And then this would give us um, the 2D material. And uh, this 2D material has been uh, theoretically predicted um, to have a, a low shear strength. This is what was shown in the end of the video. So to summarize the synthesis and processing steps. So first we have the, the synthesis of the max phase. Afterwards, we have the selective uh, etching to obtain the multi-layer maxine followed uh, by any kind of delamination, exploration step. This can be done chemically, this can be done mechanically. Uh, mechanically, for example, with uh, ultrasonication, uh, chemically with intercalation of small atoms, and then you are really able to uh, synthesize, for example, up to uh, monolayer maxines. And then you have to process them. That can be done by rock concentration, spin coating, spray coating, um, whatever you may imagine uh, related to the, the final application of the, of the nanoparticles to the uh, surface of interest. The interesting thing in Maxine's, and we are right in the beginning of the entire exploration related to mechanical and tribological properties of Maxine's, uh, is basically um, they have a certain uh, chemical structural and compositional diversity. And this is what I would like to show you here on, on, on this slide. So the interesting thing is uh, all starts with the max phase and the max phase is available in, in four different stoichiometries, uh, starting with M2AX up to M5AX4. Um, the entire idea is always removing the A element uh, with a selective etching treatment. And then you can obtain the respective maxine, which can have the stoichiometry MX2, M3X2, for example, the titanium three carbon two is one example here up to M5X4. And the TX uh, is representing all the, the potential surface terminations that we can have. And here you're gonna have a summary uh, of which kind of uh, chemical diversity we can have. Because uh, related to the early transition metal, we have these uh, uh, possibilities uh, ranging from chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, niobium, titanium, and so on. The, um, the dashed lines here, uh, means that um, it is uh, experimentally possible to produce the max phase, but so far the maxine synthesis has not been realized. Related to the A element, aluminum is just one example. Uh, we can use silicon, phosphor, sulfurs, uh, and all the other uh, mentioned here. X uh, is uh, carbon, nitrogen, uh, or a mixture of both. Um, normally like 50-50 is possible. Um, and then the potential surface termination, um, I had uh, already talked about then, um, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. So um, the interesting thing is we have a, a, a broad range of uh, stoichiometries that we can work with. Uh, we can interchange our early transition metals. We can play with the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Uh, in the future, we may be able to play with the surface terminations, for example. Um, so there's a, a, a big diversity in the entire topic. And here uh, it gets a little bit more, more complicated. Here I'm going to show you the full potential of the Maxines uh, because uh, this diversity is not enough because you can see that the, the Maxines, they can be as monotransition metal Maxines, they can be as a solid solution. So they have a random orientation of the uh, atoms or they even can be uh, in, in, in an ordered uh, situation. So even the, the degree of order is a, is a way to play with uh, Maxine's and Maxine uh, properties. 
Uh, in the lower part, you see um, which vaccines have been theoretically predicted, which have been experimentally realized. Here we have the titanium-3 uh, carbon-2, the most explored member so far. Uh, and you also can see uh, which uh, is more or less ordered and uh, which shows uh, any kind of um, solid solution. What are the, the application fields and what are the main properties of vaccines? So if you think about vaccines and what is the difference related to graphene, for example, um, graphene is also a 2D material, uh, also has, uh, graphene has a covalent, um, uh, covalent bonds uh, uh, in, the, in the carbon planes and the, the, the bonding or the interactions between different layers is, uh, is purely based normally on van der Waals uh, interactions. Um, the interesting thing for, for vaccines is um, the titanium tree carbon 2 or also other vaccines, they have a mixed bonding um, with ceramic uh, type uh, or ceramic like characteristics. So the, the bonding characteristic is, is, is basically stronger um, than in, uh, in the graphene. And the interactions between the, the layers is also stronger because uh, of course we also have van der Waals interaction, but uh, we have a lot of electronegative groups, for example, with oxygen, with fluorine. So they can also uh, interact with each other uh, uh, in, a, in a stronger way. In addition, we have a 2D material, uh, which means that uh, it has a, a high surface to volume ratio. Um, we have a good uh, or excellent electrical conductivity. Um, and altogether, you can see um, the majority of the, of the application of Maxine uh, relates to energy storage, the fabrication of super caps, uh, of batteries. Um, Right afterwards, we have, uh, of course, a, a huge uh, tendency to, to apply them in, in catalysis. And other topics of, of interest is, for example, electric magnetics, uh, electromagnetic shielding is, is a hot topic right now, uh, sensors, biology. And to be honest, the, the, a minor contribution, uh, like 4% uh, or 4 or 5% of the entire studies that you can find on vaccines, they really deal with uh, mechanical and tribological properties. The interesting thing is mechanical properties, they are very, inter uh, very important for most of the applications studied, uh, but actually not so much research has been, has been done uh, on these uh, properties. Here I have two uh, evolutions uh, for you. Maxines have been, have been synthesized the first time at, at Trexel University in, in the lab of Hugo Gotzi, 2011, uh, so that uh, everything started. And you can see that uh, their work on mechanical properties and the same uh, on tribological properties, uh, it may have started like 215. Uh, and we are still, uh, we still have a limited number of papers uh, each year. Uh, it is going up, uh, but especially for example, related to tribology, um, we have a couple of papers every year uh, and there's a lot of uh, potential uh, for further exploration. So um, the entire topic uh, or the entire talk is, uh, is, is named tunable mechanical and tribological properties. So uh, what means uh, this tunable? Um, so I would like to give you one uh, example. Uh, uh, and for this example, I, I would like to grab the, um, one specific stoichiometry, the M2X uh, system. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit the influence of the early transition metal of the uh, sea or nitrogen uh, uh, presence and also the effect of the surface termination. So the first thing what, 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 what you can do, what you can uh, predict and what you can calculate, and most of the theoretical work is done by, by DFT, to be honest. Uh, the first thing is, for example, you can study the monolayer thickness uh, and the monolayer thickness for the different vaccines dependent on the early transition metal, for example. So if you do that for bare vaccines, so means uh, we are uh, neglecting any kind of surface termination. We're just uh, assuming that there are no terminations. Uh, you can see that we end up in, in a monolayer thickness of like um, three angstrom or four angstrom uh, ish. And then uh, the interesting thing uh, comes when you start to consider um, surface termination. So the, first, the next diagram is for the oxygen termination and the following one is for chlorine uh, termination. And then you can see, for example, uh, you are increasing uh, monolayer thickness to uh, five, six around that, uh, or even for chlorine, uh, you you're gonna end up around 10 angstrom. So there's a huge uh, influence um, 
on the, the monolayer thickness related to the, the, the effective surface termination that we have. Uh, here you have the two examples for OH and also for fluorine, which uh, lay right uh, in between the, the numbers that I just mentioned. And then you can think, okay, now we have seen, okay, there's a huge uh, effect on the monolayer thickness, uh, depending on the respective surface termination. Uh, now we have learned, okay, the X can be carbon, nitrogen, or a mixture of both. So what is the effect uh, of that? Um, you can evaluate the, the bond stiffness um, and you can do that, for example, for early transition metal carbon bonds and you can do that for early transition metal, uh, nitrogen bonds and you can do that um, um, as a function, for example, or depending on the early transition metal. Uh, you can realize um, that there is an increasing trend, for example, in each block of the early transition metals related to the, to the carbon. Um, the nitrogen seems to be a little better, at least for the 3D uh, block, uh, and uh, afterwards there's, uh, it depends a little bit on the early transition metal. Um, but uh, still, most of the, of the work is theoretical uh, and that are predictions, uh, and there's not that much experimental work uh, uh, on all the topic mechanical properties. So this is uh, really to emphasize, so if we really, uh, feel some interest to explore a little bit more about that, the community will be very interested to, um, to, to see more results. Here, if you go, um, the first diagram was related to the bonds and the bond stiffness. Then if you go to the, to the Maxine uh, stoichiometry MX, uh, M2X, um, and you can do that for the, 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 the fully carbon and for the fully nitrogen uh, Maxines. Uh, and you can also calculate and estimate the 2D stiffness uh, depending on the early transition metal. Uh, and you can see that in the end, the bond stiffness and the 2D stiffness, they depend uh, on the early transition metal and on the presence of either carbon or nitrogen. In this sense, uh, you can uh, include also the effect of the, of the surface terminations. This is now done uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the carbon, uh, for the vaccines with carbon. Uh, here we have the 2D stiffness and the elastic uh, model uh, uh, for uh, oxygen or H, fluorine and chlorine terminated vaccines. And you can see that, uh, especially for the oxygen terminated vaccines, there is a significant increase in the 2D, uh, 2D stiffness and also in the elastic modulus, which holds true for most of the early transition metals. So right now, um, normally the, the surface terminations that you get out of the vaccine synthesis, they depend really on the synthesis conditions. So it means on the agent, on the time, on the concentrations. Um, so, uh, Right now, we have not the possibility, for example, to, to tune the surface terminations to say, okay, I would like to have uh, exactly, or the, the majority of the surface terminations should be oxygen. So far, we are not able to do that, but um, these predictions and these results show that uh, it could help a lot, at least related to mechanical properties, uh, to have, for example, oxygen terminated uh, vaccines. Yeah. This is a little bit the, the conclusion. So the 2D stiffness and the elastic models, they are highly affected uh, by the early transition metal and also by the surface terminations. So uh, if you think about the, the application of, of these uh, beautiful 2D materials in tribology, uh, as for all the, uh, the nanomaterials, you have basically uh, three different uh, possible applications. You can use them as a lubricant additive, as a solid lubricant, or as a composite, or as a reinforcement phase in composites. Uh, the first uh, study in tribology has been published on uh, lubricant additives. Uh, so far, to be honest, the, the success on lubricant additives uh, and vaccines is, is rather limited, and why? That is uh, pretty straightforward to explain. Uh, Maxine, they have surface termination, which, are, uh, which have a high electronegativity. And this makes the surface of the vaccines or the outer surface hydrophilic. And then of course, if you try to mix a hydrophilic nanomaterial with a hydrophobic base oil, uh, you're gonna get problems with um, dispersion stability um, and with agglomerations uh, over time. And this is most probably the reason why um, the success is still limited. This would also give a lot of space for, for further exploration. Uh, there are groups working, for example, on surface functionalization trying to, to attach to encore, for example, longer hydrocarbon uh, chains uh, to make the surface hydrophobic. And then you would also increase um, 
uh, the dispersion stability and normally you should enhance the terminological properties. Today I would like to talk a little bit about solid lubricants, which is maybe uh, the, the, the best success story so far of Maxine's and, and tribology, although composites also show some, some nice potential. Uh, here you have some, some TEM uh, characterization. Uh, here in the, in the figure C, you really can see this kind of beautiful 2D structure. This is like a multi-layer uh, stack uh, of Maxine's. Uh, here you can see uh, the distance uh, or the interlayer distance is less than one nanometer, it's about 900 picometers, uh, which makes it very interesting for catalysis and for, for energy applications. But as already mentioned, um, 2D Maxine's, they have been theoretically predicted with uh, uh, with easy to shear ability, so they should work pretty well as a solid lubricant. So what we do is um, we have deposited like uh, 100 nanometer thick or thin uh, multi-layer Maxine coatings on stainless steel um, by electro spraying um, and just check uh, the solid lubrication ability. So here you can see um, the coating, um, the, the bright uh, layer on top is platinum, just the protection in the, for the flip cut. Uh, the black one is the coating. So we can see we can really uh, produce homogeneous uh, coatings with the multi-layer maxines, uh, thickness about 100 nanometer. The substrate uh, is stainless steel. This we use basically in a, in a, in a, in a nano travel meter or in a tribological setup is ball on disc uh, in linear reciprocating sliding mode. And then uh, we record uh, friction uh, over sliding cycles. And here I have three plots for you. The first plot is for 500 cycles, the second one for 5,000, and the last one for uh, 100,000 sliding cycles. And we have the reference, uh, which is basically uh, silicon nitride uh, as a ball material rubbing against the stainless steel. We have the typical running in, and we end up in a, in a rather high uh, coefficient of friction, around 0.8, uh, with some fluctuations. In red, we see the Maxine coating, uh, 100 nanometer thick, uh, and we can see we have a significant friction reduction and it is stable uh, over time. There's uh, almost no running in. Uh, the interesting thing is, uh, okay, the, the friction reduction is nice, uh, but uh, the, the issue with graphene, for example, is okay, uh, with graphene, you can even uh, end up in, 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 in super lubricity, very, very low coefficient of friction. But once the, the, the graphene coating starts to wear off, uh, then you really lose the beneficial uh, properties and the entire functionality. So graphene is very limited in terms of uh, longevity and durability. Uh, so that's why we were interested, okay, what's gonna happen if we really significantly increase the number of cycles, 100,000 sliding cycles. This is uh, a sliding time of more than a day. Uh, and the interesting thing is we can see some, some, um, some uh, prey, uh, or some peaks, some frictional peaks, uh, COF uh, tends to shoot up, but it goes uh, down again to the base level and we have these beneficial uh, tribological properties over a long, long time. The question is why do we observe that and how does it compare with the state of the art? Uh, I would like to answer these uh, two questions. Uh, first, why? Uh, so, uh, of course, what you typically do is you start to, to characterize the counterbodies and the substrate. The first thing what you can observe when you see the silicon nitride ball, you see this kind of uh, black uh, transfer layer that you, that you can observe. And then you, you start to get interested. Okay, what is this, uh, this tribal layer about? So obviously, there's a, there's a, there's a transfer to the ball uh, of, uh, of any kind of uh, tribologically um, changed material. Uh, you can start to, to check, for example, the interfaces uh, and the crane structure. And the crane structure, the first thing what you can see is, okay, we have a refined uh, zoom. So there's something going on related to the microstructure and uh, comparing the reference on the left-hand side with the, with the Maxine on the right-hand side, we can see that this is somehow uh, reduced. It's reduced by 50%. Um, so there's really something going on because of the temperature and of the pressure that is acting uh, in the tribological contact. And then you start, you need to start to, to look for the, for the titanium because the titanium you can, you can connect and explain with the, with the Maxime. So you can do a, a EDX mapping, trying to, to look where you can find a lot of titanium uh, and then extract for example, a TEM foil exactly in this uh, area where the titanium signal is high. Uh, you can do that. Uh, you can do uh, uh, 
uh, EDX mapping in the DM, so with high resolution. So here we have a scale bar of 50 nanometer. Um, and then the interesting thing is what, what you can see here is, okay, you start to observe this kind of flake-like structure uh, in the titanium signal. And if you check that from a structural point of view, you're gonna end up uh, in kind of uh, degraded maxine sheets that you, that you can identify. So what does it mean? Uh, degraded, degraded means it has a structurally degraded because we have been starting with a multi-layer stack uh, and we can barely see like five, six layers now. So it has dec decreased in, 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 his, in its thickness. Uh, it also, uh, they, they tend to decrease in the lateral size, X, Y, and also they, there might be some, some chemical degradation, but it is, uh, it is there and we can identify the contribution even after 100,000 sliding cycles of this material. In this sense, we, we came up with a, with a mechanism. Um, so the first uh, contribution, of course, they have this easy to shear ability, which certainly helps in a tribological context. Um, the Maxine is forming a, a tribal layer. This tribal layer uh, is, a, is, a, is a, has a contribution of uh, amorphous and uh, nanocrystalline iron oxides intermixed with uh, degraded Maxine sheets. And what we also have uh, been realizing, of course, there's a material transfer. So from a tribological system that was originally uh, stainless steel on silicon nitride, we actually transform the tribal system in tribal layer versus tribal layer. And moreover, we have uh, observed this kind of uh, reservoir effect uh, because of the linear precipitating sliding movement. You, you pile up uh, original uh, maxi material uh, at uh, the ends of the wear track where you have zero velocity. And in this moment, you, you are always able to, um, to bring back some of the lubricious material back to the travel austral contact where it is actually needed. The interesting thing is now, um, how does it compare with the, with the state of the art? Um, so this we also have tried to address. So here we have a plot related uh, coefficient of friction. Here we have a normalized real life. Uh, we had to normalize the, the things uh, because um, if you check uh, for solid lubricant, uh, lubricant coatings, you can find micron scale coatings, you can find monolayer coatings. So it's really important to normalize it um, related to the, to the thickness of the coating. And also you, 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 you know that uh, trilogical testing depends a lot on the, uh, uh, on the conditions. So we also have normalized it on the contact pressure. And then the interesting thing is uh, here we have some early st some early studies on 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 Maxine's, but they have been trap casted uh, with a poor uh, um, film or coating quality. We have the graphene contribution. Uh, we have the the graphene oxide, uh, graphene uh, MOS two heterostructures. Um, tungsten disulfide. Uh, and then if you see our study here, the one hundred nanometer thick electro a maxine coating, we see that if we, if we have a comparable CRF, which is far, far away from any kind of uh, super lubricity, but uh, the key factor of these coatings is they show like uh, really like a, a long lasting effect. Uh, so they, they can really make a significant contribution um, uh, in terms of uh, their durability. So it uh, outperforms the existing state of the art by a factor of two or by a factor of three, depending on the uh, material uh, and combination you would like to look at. So far, so good. Uh, we have seen some some very nice effects uh, in in lab experiments. Um, and then the, the, the always the question uh, is okay uh, in the lab is is nice under controlled conditions uh, it works pretty fine. But how does it perform in real machine components which uh, have higher contact pressures? So this we also have tried to address a little bit, uh, and we have applied them uh, Maxine coated race race for example and thrust ball bearings. Um, here you see a little bit the, the, the working conditions, uh, normal load of 130 Newton um, with a uh, respective um, rotational velocity. Uh, in this uh, in study, just um, the, the race waves were, 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 were coated. And here we can see the, the effect uh, uh, comparing the reference versus the Maxine coated uh, uh, bearing, um, why we have um, the, the catastrophic failure um, by about, for about 250,000 
uh, overrollings, we have a significant uh, uh, enhancement for the maxine coated bearing. Um, we also have a significant uh, in, uh, decrease uh, in the frictional torque uh, and also in the in the in the overrollings uh, until we have the, the catastrophic failure. So the interesting thing is it also works uh, under real uh, working conditions. Uh, and there's a significant improve related to service life uh, and energy efficiency just by the by the usage of um, yeah simple uh, multi-layer Maxine uh, solid lubricant coatings. Now the, the question is okay um, for the lab we have made this comparison with the existing state of the art data. Uh, now we were also curious uh, for the for the application. So um, for example, uh, related to, to, to bearings or thrust pro bearings, uh, diamond-like carbon or MOS2 coatings, they are very well explored. Uh, they have been optimized uh, for decades. Uh, and we would like, we wanted to see uh, how good is the performance uh, of the Maxines uh, compared with really state-of-the-art solid lubricant systems for, for industrial applications. Um, this we have done uh, in the following study. Um, so we have studied MOS2 uh, and two different types of, um, of diamond-like carbon. And the interesting thing is if you compare uh, these uh, related to the overwallings until failure, uh, we can see, okay, here in gray, we have the, the uncoated reference. Uh, MOS2 uh, helps uh, for sure. Um, diamond-like carbon as well. But the interesting thing is that the Maxine, they, they do uh, perform a little better than the well-established MOS2 and diamond-like carbon systems. So this was a little surprising to us um, because uh, in the end, uh, as I said, MOS2 and diamond-like carbon, they have been um, optimized since decades uh, for these approaches. Uh, and uh, our uh, simple drop-casted uh, Maxine uh, coating uh, really helped to improve that. That was really surprising uh, for the early stage of turbological research we are in for, for the Maxine nanosheets. So here I have uh, also it helped uh, to reduce wear uh, uh, in, the, in the chef washer and the housing uh, washer, uh, for example. Um, and then we were a little bit curious uh, uh, about the mechanism. So we started to, to do, for example, some, some Raman spectroscopy on the raceway, on the ball and on the cage. Uh, and the interesting thing is that we were able to, uh, to detect the, the Maxine nanosheets uh, in the raceway, which was the application for sure, uh, the bore material, and, in, and also in the cage, we could find the, the, the Raman signal of the, of the Maxines, which clearly shows that the, that the, the material transfer and this formation of, the, of, a, of a beneficial tribal film or tribal layer is really, really important to, um, to induce these beneficial properties and especially the beneficial wear properties. So we came up with, with, with a mechanism uh, of, a, of a compacted Maxine layer of a, of a tribal layer, which is uh, transferred uh, to the ball and also to the cage, uh, which we could detect by, by Raman spectroscopy. To give you an outlook, um, we are just in the beginning of um, tribological or mechanical research of Maxines. Uh, so what does it mean? So that means, for example, for, for tribology, uh, most, of the most of the studies, they have used multi-layer titanium three carbon two. Um, so you can do, uh, for example, studies on uh, changing the multi-layer to uh, single layer, to bi-layer, to few layer, whatever you can imagine. Uh, all this is possible to, to delaminate. Uh, you can change the stoichiometry. For example, you go from titanium three carbon two to titanium uh, two carbon, or you change, for example, the carbon uh, and nitrogen ratio. So from titanium uh, three carbon two, you can work with titanium three carbon nitrogen. So that would mean the carbon nitrogen have a 50 50 uh, ratio. And then, for example, um, there's an entire, uh, almost an entire uh, table, uh, periodic uh, system, which is available related to the early transition metals. There's barely anything known about tribology and mechanical properties. So there are a few studies uh, working with niobium uh, uh, maxines, uh, but um, there's almost nothing available. Uh, related to Maxine synthesis, of course, people, they try to work uh, on different uh, synthesis approaches. Uh, every week or every month, I, I can find new uh, recipes um, 
but the, the main uh, idea needs to be really to um, to make the, the surface terminations uh, more predictable. So uh, an ongoing trend right now in, in the entire community is uh, really to to try to, to synthesize vaccines with any kind of specific surface termination. But so far, at least uh, as far as I know, this has not been, been realized yet. Um, moreover, um, there's, people always explore new early transition metals, uh, new A group elements, uh, new uh, compositions. People work a lot on uh, ordered and, and uh, solid solutions. There even there's even a concept which just came uh, came out as a preprint on on high entropy vaccines, uh, like very similar idea, uh, like high entropy alloys, uh, um, and as I said, new and uh, uniform surface uh, terminations is, is going to be really a key issue um, for for property tuning. In the same direction goes the defect concentration, so there are always vacancies. Uh, uh, available, especially when you work with uh, aggressive etching treatment. So this is something people work on and people try to improve um, to, to get lower defect densities, uh, to get better, better sheets in the end. Um, and as I said, um, there's uh, an entire topic, an entire world of vaccines to be explored related to their mechanical and tribological properties. Um, this is just the beginning where we are right now. And as a, uh, as the last slide, I would like to show you like a very nice summary. Uh, this is a slide that I got from Yuri Gugotzi, um, which uh, impressively shows the potential of, of vaccines. Uh, so um, they are nanometer thick, uh, but they conduct electricity like, like a metal. Uh, um, they can be dispersed in water and they have capabilities that no one could imagine. So they're used for energy storage, uh, for purification of water. Uh, for sensing properties, uh, for uh, cancer treatment, even for COVID, uh, they are going to be used now. And uh, we have the opportunity to work on these kinds of um, exciting 2D materials um, from a mechanical and tribological perspective. So, um, yeah, all this, all this work has not been done by myself, only by myself. Uh, I have to be, give credit to a lot of uh, friends, colleagues, uh, and, and collaborations. Um, I would like to thank you uh, very much for your kind attention uh, and also to the, to the sponsors that give some money uh, for these kinds of research. All right, thank you, Andreas. Uh, really enjoyed learning about the synthesis of the vaccines. Uh, if you have questions, um, Please uh, write them in the chat. So maybe people are thinking a little bit about it too, but uh, <laughs> I had one, I don't know, it might not be the best question, but uh, I think it was slide 29 uh, with, when you're correlating the friction and the wear rate. Yep. Uh, this kind of reminded me of a Strabat curve in a way. <laughs> but uh i mean i don't know there's probably i mean you have wear on that x-axis um but there are some people have done um they found you can kind of generate a strabic curve with a soft metal on a hard surface like a hard substrate um so i wonder if there's something similar to that here so we do um, yeah, good yeah I'm I'm not very sure about that. I mean, the you know you know the, the concept of Strabag curve is very much for for lubricated um, friction. Yeah. Uh, the the only thing what we wanted to make sure is um, if you think about this benchmark, I mean, you, it it makes a lot of sense to to compare it with caffeine on MOS two. Uh, and then when when you start to look up for 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 these studies, a lot of studies in caffeine they really use monolayers, layers, bi, bi layers, and then you you really get in trouble. Uh, how to compare um, the, the tribological properties because of course, if you have a monolayer and 100 nanometer, so you have like almost 100 times more material, which right. extends of course the, the tribological properties. So the only reason why we try to plot it in, in this way 
was really to find any kind of fair comparison uh, related to the to the material that you deposit on top of the of the substrate, and of course related to the to the testing conditions. Because if you uh, do a test with two hundred megapascal or you do a test with one gigapascal, of course you're going to get a significant uh, difference. And uh, it's very important not to compare apple with pears in the end. Um, yeah. And this was the only reason why we we decided. Uh, the, the, the thing with the soft metals, I, I may imagine that with the with the contact pressure, you're going to soften the material and you may even transfer it to any kind of liquid state if it's going to be high enough, uh, the, the, the temperature and the, the, the pressure that you have in the trilogical contact. Um, um, but at least our, our, our figure was really just uh, for, for comparison reason. Have you, um, is it possible to like calculate a, a, a wear rate like for the yes. materials, we have we have a we have a wear rate calculator. This is uh, in the order of ten to minus nine, so okay. this is also really really low wear rate. So this this really the the, the key issue uh, from a from a, all the people that are interested uh, in in super lubricity, they will have no interest uh, in in Maxine because up to now they show uh, CoFs point point one five point two nothing nothing exciting from 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 super uh, from super point of view but uh, in my eyes the, the key issue related to the maxines is really the durability so they're, yeah. they're really forming these beneficial tribal layers which really helps to to extend it to to long times and really makes them applicable to 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 machine components in the end which is not given for for other 2d materials Great. Uh, so we do have a question here. Uh, which synthesis methods for few layer maxines would had you found that are the most effective for improving the surface terminations? Sorry, I might not have read that. Let me try it again. <laughs> which synthesis methods for few layer maxines had you found that are the most effective? Have you found that are most effective for improving the surface terminations? Um. Look, the, um, related uh, to, to this question is, is a little tricky. Uh, as I said, um, the, the first recipe was, was based on HF. So you just put it in a very aggressive uh, acid. You make use of the different bonding characteristics. You're gonna etch out the aluminum and you're gonna form a lot of defects uh, plus the surface terminations. Um, it's completely random what, what comes out uh, uh, of the, in terms of distribution, in terms of position. Uh, of course, the higher the concentration of the acid, the more vacancies and the more defects you, you, you're going to form. This is for sure. Um, the, 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 the synthesis method on, on lithium fluoride and HL still uh, relies on HF, because if you mix lithium fluoride with HL, it from HF, which helps to remove it uh, in the end. But of course, you have it in much lower concentrations. Uh, but still, the first that you're going to get out is oxygen or H and fluorine. Uh, if you uh, move to, there are molten salts based on uh, zinc chloride, um, like Lewis acid approaches. Um, there you can at least get rid a little bit of the, of the fluorine contributions uh, or surface terminal and, and you replace them by, by chlorine in the end. But in the end, there's no synthesis method that really can help. Okay, I would like to get you uh, get rid of O or H or fluorine, and I'm going to replace them by any other kind. This is not available so far. Nobody knows. Okay. Um, yeah. One more question I had was. Uh, so yeah, as different, you know, maybe there's these materials have an ideal properties for some situation. Is it? Do you think there might be a benefit to you know, um, looking for synergistic effects where you use multiple, using it with other lubricants or other solid lubricants? Right. Uh, I think that's, I mean, I, I have to comment in, 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 in two ways on that. Um, I mean, tribological research on vaccines have start, uh, has started three years ago. Uh, about uh, at least related to solid lubricants, the, the lubricant uh, additives a little earlier, uh, but we are very in the beginning. So, and we have explored less than one percent of the uh, available vaccines that uh, that we can try. Uh, 
Um, I'm always asked by, by Jürgen Gorzi or by also Baba Ganasui, who's also the, one of the inventor of Maxine's, who's now a professor in Indianapolis. And which Maxine do you want to try? And I always say, I don't know. <laughs> because there's just no theoretical guidance that could tell you, okay, if you would have a DFT work that would tell you something about adhesion, uh, mechanical properties that would tell you, okay, let's try the molybdenum ones or let's try the vanadium ones. N nobody knows really something about that. So right now, unfortunately, trilogical research on Maxine's is, is tried and error. Um, there's no guide that helps you related to the, to the exploration. Uh, we, we may, if we try other systems, we may find more beneficial properties, I believe. Uh, maybe not, uh, but nobody knows. Um, so this is the first. And then the, the other thing is, I think it will make a lot of sense to combine it with other 2D materials. Uh, for example, if you think about the combination graphene and Maxine, graphene on the one hand, uh, very good frictional properties up to super lubricity. Uh, Maxine on the other hand, very good for wear, but not as good for friction. Uh, making any kind of heterostructure or nano composite, nano hybrid structure, and then you can start. Okay, you can do that in sandwiching. You can do that. You can change uh, the, the portion of the layers. Uh, we are beginning a, an entire research on, on, on this topic, I believe, uh, and it will make a lot of sense to, to work on that. Okay. Are there any other questions? There's one question on, on terrible performance. Uh, I don't see that one here. Do you see it on yours? Uh, yeah. Okay, I don't. I don't see that question for some reason. They, they might have said. Ah, directly exactly. Was 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 directly going to me, right? Yeah. The, uh, it's asking. Hi, sir. It was a nice presentation. Can you please highlight on thermal uh, performance? Um, thermal performance. I believe that you 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 he would like to refer to thermal conductivity. Um, what I can tell you is uh, Maxine's have a very, very good electrical conductivity and they have also a very good thermal conductivity. This is our clue because we have seen that the change in the, for example, in the affected zone in the microstructure, for example, which just, which just was half of, uh, of the reference. So we believe that uh, due to the, the good in-plane bonds that we have and the high conductivity that we have uh, in the plane, you you also be able to, to to conduct heat and to bring it away uh, and to disperse it to the surrounding. This uh, we connected with the uh, reduced um, tribology affected inter interface in the microstructure. All right. Uh, unless you see any more questions, um, I don't see any more here. But uh, thank you for doing this again and. Oh, I think uh, everybody learned quite a bit about uh, this area. Hopefully. And um, have a good week. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was a, it was a pleasure to talk.